Um, wanted to welcome you to have lunch with Laura. I hope you're grabbing a sandwich salad or something yummy and that you can pick up on some tips and uh, techniques that I'm going to show you today. I um, let's, We've had a busy couple of months with celebration. It ended yesterday, day before yesterday. And um, now we are into March, March Madness. So tune in to my website at Stampin' at the Bird Nest for details. And I'm going to show you right here where you can place an order, put the March host code in. I have a new email, laura at stampinatthebirdnest.com. And stampinatthebirdnest.com is also my uh, website. So, now today we are going to be using a hybrid set, which is so very cool. The bundle comes, and the name I should start off with is Sweet Citrus. And this is a really fun set. It has enjoy the sweeter things in life, have a zesty birthday, sending you a big squeeze, and thanks a bunch. You get flowers, leaves, the rind of your citrus fruit, and then the inside. You also, with the bundle, get, let me put this back in its place, the sweet citrus, which I'm not sure you're aware of yet or not, but they have decided to go with the same name on the die as on the uh, stamp set, which I am loving because it's so much easier to find. So along with the stamp set, the dies, you also get a 3D embossing folder. And this is called sweet citrus, which I misspelled. And I'm going to just show you how fabulous this set is and how much fun it is to use. On our card, I have embossed the front. And with our embossing folder, not the back, just the front, and I'm going to show you how to do that, I've added a piece of designer paper which is two by five and a half inches. We're gonna need white, about a fourth of a sheet of white, which is four and a quarter by five and a half. And then I added some granny apple green solid leaves behind it and some daffodil delight little uh, flowers behind the stamped and cut out ones. I've added a piece of ribbon and these awesome pearls. And we have some gems there too that I'm going to show you. So let's get with it and I'm going to show you right quick how you go about doing the front of your card with your embossing folder. It sounds a little tricky, but the main thing you have to do is just put it in the correct place. And before I fold, folded mine, I went ahead and embossed it, just in case I do it the wrong way. So this should be the front, because I'm going to be folding it backwards. And I want... They both feel almost the same. This is raised, and this has the rim, if that makes sense to you. So you, you feel all the um, intricate details of the citrus on this side. So I'm going to put that to the back of my card so that it'll pop up. And I'm going to line this up so that 
this black line right here is going to be where I want my edge to be and then on this side I'm going to make sure that it is right on the crease which I think it is okay there we go let's get this just a little bit on that black line okay now, when you go to make your sandwich, and because I'm using the larger uh, embossing folders and dies, this won't work with the mini cut and emboss. So I'm going to be using the big one today. And there's a special sandwich that you have to make. All of the instructions on how to make your sandwiches are on plate one with the exception of uh, using the very thin dies. So down here you're going to go until you find use the 3D embossing folders and it shows plate one then your sandwich and then plate four. Now this one probably is the least used plate in the set, but you need to have it so that it'll fit through your embossing machine. And I'm not going to bring my embossing machine all the way up here, but I am going to make sure that I have it all on plate one. So this is how I'm going to use it. I'm going to stagger my plate just a little bit so that the cogs or whatever you call that mechanism inside will catch it. And sometimes it gets a little, you have to use a little muscle there. And let's see how it came out. Okay, looks good. So I'm going to fold it back, give it a crease with my bone folder to burnish the edge, and make sure it lies flat. And we can go ahead and put on the designer paper. Now this paper is called, let me see the name of it, Dainty Flowers. And uh, I'm going to use, because of the fact that you've got your raised area, I'm going to use our Seal Plus. This is a little stronger and it'll give a little better hold when you're trying to attach things to a rough surface. And I'm going to make sure the leaves are going up and down. Okay. And I see what I already did. So we'll start on the one that's extra. I was supposed to put my ribbon on first. And I didn't do it. Okay. Let me get my ribbon out. Now, I showed last week how to use the uh, crinkled seam binding that's in Whisper White, and it's $7.50. It's in the annual catalog. But how you can use, this won't work with markers. It works with the blends. But you just take the dark, the large end and rub it and it coats very easily it dries quickly and it gives a little body to it 
Okay, not that it, it's real flimsy, but it does give a little body. Well, one of the reasons I was late was I couldn't find my extra roll of this and I'm, I'm out of it. So I'm using a, another Whisper White and, um, I'm sorry, another uh, ribbon that's Daffodil Delight. And I had it in my stash and I've never used it and it'll work just great. Now on your grid paper that we sell, you'll have a ruler which comes in handy. And I'm gonna measure off about six and a half inches. I want it to go around the DSP. And let me see, oh here it is. Here's my other piece. So I'm going to just put a little bit of the seal right in the middle at the bottom so that I can wrap it around. Oops, I used too much. Okay, so I'm going to wrap that around and tack it. Okay. Let's see if that's somewhat in the middle. All right, now I'm going to put my seal around here to hold everything down. And I'm also going to go over that ribbon. I want to make sure it doesn't come loose. Okay. So I'm putting that right in the middle. And then I'm going to need a piece that is approximately 10 inches. So this goes to seven and a half and I'm gonna add a three more inches or so and that will be for the bow. So I'm gonna go ahead and tie that just because I have it right here. And I'm turning it upside down so my legs will go the right way. If you can tie your bows the normal way and not have to turn it around like I do, you may do that. Okay. Okay. So now, let's see. Okay, so, so far, so good. Um, just move that up. It's loose so you can move it up or down. And I'm gonna clip these just a little. Okay, now I'm gonna set my card aside because I wanna show you a few things. In with the dies and the stamps, these three little flowers right here are in one stamp and you can cut them out all of three of them together. So you got a, a large one and two little ones and then they also give you two additional large flowers. The leaves, same thing, you get one stamp but you get two leaves that you can cut out at the same time. Now I went ahead just to save a little time, I went ahead and cut out, stamped and cut out what we were gonna need. So I have a couple of stamped flower uh, leaves and I'm using the background that um, and the cardstock that's the base, is called Pear Pizzazz. But I used Granny Apple Green because it was a little bit darker. And I'm just gonna layer these on top, like so, just so it peeks out a little bit, okay? And I'm gonna do that on both of those. And I'm going to use my glue dots. 
These glue dots come in the paper pumpkin and in our other kits. And they come on sheets like this. So, let's see. Well, I was trying to make that bigger and I made it smaller. Okay. So you can see these, and I'm using my Take Your Pick tool to scrape it off, and I'm going to put it on the back of the stamped leaves. Then you just have to flick off the little cover and put it however you want to arrange it on the non-stamped leaf and see that just makes it a little more I guess 3D oops I didn't take the back off that makes a difference okay there we go so I'm going to put those aside because we're going to be using that and I also stamped some large and small flowers and I did the same thing I stamped them on white with Daffodil Delight. Then I cut out some of the flowers in just the plain Daffodil Delight. And let's see. I'm just going to need a couple of those. My little um, top got dumped over a minute ago, so everything in it is backwards now. Okay, let's see. We're going to need another one of those. And it's probably going to be enough. In fact, I only used one large flower there and two little ones, so we'll see. Okay, same thing. I'm just going to use a glue dot. This time I'm just going to put it in the middle of the cardstock flower. The Daffodil Delight and just offset it just so it looks like it's a fuller flower. Same thing with this one. put our little jewels and um, things on in a minute. Okay, I'm going to put away everything that we're not going to be using. And let's see. Now, I wanted to show you that you can stamp your uh, lemons, limes, grapefruit, whatever you're doing. And I just played around until I came up with some different, um, I wanted the outline to be a little bit darker than the inside. So this is actually Daffodil Delight with So Saffron on the inside. Or let me put it that way, it's supposed to be. <laughs> it's supposed to look like this. This is a little bit lighter. So you can stamp them. And let me show you. You can stamp them and then cut it out and it'll be just flat, which is fine. That's what I did for this, this uh, particular card. So all of the citrus here is flat but I want to show you how you can get this raised effect so what I'm going to do is take my Stamparatus this is one of my best friends in stamping because you can see how the texture comes out when you do it this way I'm using just a small piece of paper that is, I think it is four by, almost three by four. And I'm going to put it 
And the reason I'm doing that is because I'm only worried and wanting to get these two pieces. So that looks like that's going to be fine. I'm going to put my, I scooted it over when I did that. I like to mark with a pencil just so that you know if you're doing um, more than one card, you know what you did the last time. Be sure to use your magnets. I'm going to wipe this off so we can start fresh. Now I'm going to use the Daffodil Delight for the rind. It's a good idea when you have your plate open and you're stamping on it to put something under it so that it doesn't put stress right here on your hinges. So a stamp uh, case works good. I'm sure there are many other things you could use. Okay. And then I'm going to rub it. Let's see. Okay, it needs to be done one more time. That's why I love the Stamparatus. I'm not sure you can see it, but right here and right here, I didn't put enough pressure. So I'm going to go back over it, and it'll be right in the same spot. It's like magic. Love it. Okay, now see how that came out better? Now, the wonderful thing with the Stamparatus is that you can do use it comes with two plates, and what I did was I put the rind on one and the inside, the fruit part, on a different one. Now, I'm going to turn this over just to make sure, and I think I'm going to move it over just a, I mean, like a 32nd of an inch to see if I can get those. And that looks good, that looks good. And again, so that I make sure I'm stamping with the right thing, I'm going to clean this off. And I'm just using a chamois cloth. This is not one that we sell. We sell one that's thicker and it's awesome. So, I'm gonna close up my Daffodil Delight and get out the so saffron. And again, like I said, it's a good idea to put something behind that. And I'm just going to get this plate out of the way. But in case you don't know about this, you've actually got four surfaces. So you can flip this around and put a different die and the same thing on this plate. So it really is a wonderful tool. So I'm going to stamp this up. And there you go. I'm going to mash it and see if we need to re-ink it. And I don't think we do. So now you can see that the Daffodil Delight comes out a little bit darker than the inside. And it's amazing that the... Um, so saffron comes out that dark. It will lighten up as it completely dries. Okay, I'm going to take this away. We're through with the stamp rows. The first thing you're going to need to do is you emboss it before you cut it out. So you've got to figure out which way to turn it. So here is the large orange that's cut in half and this one's kind of tilted. So I am going to get that right. You have to keep kind of turning it around a little bit. And remember how I told you that this side right here, it has the raised edge part. So that's what I'm trying to get there. 
I wanted my stamp pieces to be right in that, that uh, edge part. All right, we are gonna be using the same sandwich with plate one and plate four. And we have learned recently in a video that Stampin' Up! put out that if you stagger your plates, it makes it much easier going through your cutting emboss machine. Okay, let's see how I did. Oops, sorry, didn't mean to get my head in there. Okay, you can see on the back side the embossing. So let's see how it looks here. I did pretty good. All right, now you're going to use this die that cuts out everything. And again, you're going to have to rotate it until you get right where you want it. Okay, and that looks, like I said, we're only worried about these two. And let me get one of my plates here. Be sure to use a posted note, some removable tape, washi tape, whatever you have, but you want to make sure that your die does not move. Okay, I'm even going to put another little one right there. Now you're going to go back to your original sandwich, which is plate one, plate two, plate three. Then you have your inside of your sandwich. And here comes the topper. Okay, now this is what I was talking about. If you can take either plate two or you could do it with plate one two. And what we're trying to, to do is make the letter E. So you can see that this, and then it goes in, and then it sticks out to kind of make it look like the letter E. But that way the plates are staggered and they will slide through much easier. I find that when I'm working with the mini cut and emboss machine, it's sometimes more of a problem to get it started. And if you will make that E, it will come out right every time with no struggling. Okay. Now, let me put my... Let me put my die back on here and put that aside. And here we have our embossed limits. Okay, now let's put this baby together. Here's our card and here's our sample. And I just started, oh, I did use the little one. Oh, well. We're only going to have two on this. And, um, or I could use one of these. I'll use one that I did before. And we'll do a grouping of three. Supposedly in the art world, that's what you're supposed to have is odd numbers. Threes, fives, whatever. So, or we could use that little one that didn't quite get cut. Nah. We use the big one. Okay, I am going to pop these up using our dimensionals. I love dimensionals, but I also love not wasting them. And I think two on each of these is enough to hold it down. Part of it's going to be on the um, designer paper. And I'll go ahead and splurge and use three on the big one. Okay. 
take these off. Let me pull my camera down just a little bit. I hope you've been able to see everything. Okay, I'm just going to kind of put it to the side there. That one wasn't cut as well. I think that's why I didn't, I did it again. But anyway, we'll put this here. And I'm just going to put this one kind of upside down and still use it. Okay, there we go. So now we have our lemons on and let's put our little flowers and leaves. Okay. And I did pop these up too. So I'm going to put two on there. And that gives the, uh, the two that are together and staggered. I only used one little glue dot, so that'll make sure they stay. All right, that can go right there. I'm going to do the same thing here. Oops, well, that's, that'll work. Okay, I'm going to put it right down here, right underneath. Then we can decorate with the little flowers. I just think this is such a cute set. And I can use one there. And let me see if I've got some of the minis hanging around. Well, here, I've got the little um, edges. You remember, I've told you, don't throw those away. That's money. Okay. So I'm going to stick a piece right on there. And, oh, let's put it right there. And we'll put this one maybe over here. Now, you can slide that bow down a little bit, make it a little tighter and smaller if you need to. And now we have to have some bling. You know me and bling, I have to have a little shining. Now these are the gems that are in the um, catalog. And I'm going to use a couple of the small ones. And again, I'm using my Take Your Pick tool. This thing really comes in handy. That can go there. And we'll use a little bit bigger one. These come in three different sizes, as you can see there. But I've used up all of my little ones. And the, um, let's see where I put them. If y'all have not discovered these flat adhesive backed pearls, they are in the, the um, mini catalogs and they are wonderful. They're iridescent and they're not perfectly round and they come in two sizes. So let's see, I'm going to use one right there, and I think I'll put two little ones on the other two lemons. Now, I don't know if you can see, but it, it kind of picks up whatever color it's on. I just love that. But anyway, there is our card. Now, we do need to have something on the inside. I use my little grid paper that I call a centering mat. And I'm going to put that right there. And let me see which sediment we're going to use today. I think I'm going to do sending you a big squeeze. I have, I need to send this to my sister. 
and I'm going to go ahead and use the granny apple green. And you can easily make one of these mats. I just got some grid paper and you can see it's been well loved. But I cut, I traced it so that you can put your card this way and use these two lines and the one on your right to center. Or you can do it for a card that's landscaped. And then you can use these two lines and the one at the bottom. So since this card's going up and down, I'm going to use this. And I'm going to stamp this up real good. And I, am, I haven't used this stamp before, so let me test it. Okay, comes out good. So there I am, close to the middle. And <laughs> I have a hard time doing this without getting my head in the way. So we'll see how straight. That's not bad. Sending you a big squeeze. And I have some extra little flowers and leaves. So I think I'm just going to put a leaf and a flower right there. I'm going to use glue dots on this too if I can find where I'll put them. Move this out of the way. Okay. They are nowhere to be seen, so I'm going to just use a little bit of our seal. Or you could use liquid glue. And there's my flower. go ahead and put a little let's do a little flat oops here we go a little flat one right there since it's bumpy on the inside I don't think that's gonna matter okay I mean on the outside so there is your card remember to put your hallmark all you kindergartners need to remember to sign your cards. We're proud of these and hope that the recipients see how much work has gone into it. On your envelope, you can either put some designer paper on the flap or just stamp your little leaf. down in the corner and if you want to put another little sentiment right there you can if not it can be as simple as that so I hope you like today's card I hope you'll come back and visit with me next week and Come back and have lunch with me. Find out some tips and techniques. And y'all, I'm having a blast with all of these stamp sets. There are just so, there's so much out there that I want to show you how to use. And um, come back and visit and see me. If you need anything, you can reach me at Laura at Stampin' Up. Up, oh, that's my old one. Laura at stampinatthebirdnest.com. You can send me an email, um, or you can just go to my website, shop. You can reach me through there, too. So until I see you again next week, have a wonderful weekend, 
and take care enjoy the weather wherever you are as you can see I'm in t-shirts and I have on capris today but I've already pulled out my shorts so we're not having the cool weather I was hoping for but anyway we're enjoying it so take care I love you and I'll see you next time